Good afternoon. Thank you for attending GP201, today's session. My name is Justin Klein and I will be the moderator and your presenter today is Matt Mason. He is the co-lead of our GP practice. And with that, I'll hand the reins over to Matt. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Matt Mason and uh, I'm your presenter today. A little bit about me. Uh, I have been working for Maynard Kasterson in a consultant capacity since 2003. So I just passed starting my 17th year. Uh, and so I, and that has pretty much been all Microsoft Dynamics GP uh, consulting. Uh, I actually worked, uh, some of you know, some many of you don't. I actually worked as a CPA for Maynard uh, a while before that, but I am uh, far away from practicing accounting anymore, although I find it helps in doing this, this sort of thing. Um, I am a, uh, I am a, I was a resident of East Lansing or Lansing area uh, until last year when uh, due to the uh, good graces of our president, Jeff Stevens, uh, he let me relocate down here in North Carolina. So that is what I, that's where I am right now. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a brisk 90 degrees here with a really temperate, uh, probably 90% humidity. So uh, even though I hear it's uh, been hot there, probably not like this. Uh, so I work out of my, I work out of my home, which is where I am right now. And uh, uh, just FYI, uh, I'm wearing something that probably maybe none of you have seen before, but I just felt this is very important that I dress the part for this, for this auspicious occasion here. So uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, without further ado, with just a couple of other things, uh, the questions. Um, those of you who know me know I hate doing webinars, frankly. I hate speaking into a computer where I can't see people's faces and I can't interact. You can ask questions. You can ask them at any time. And Justin, you ask, you show them to Justin via the chat, I think it is, and he'll he'll stop me and ask me what's on your mind. The only time I might not answer is if I'm going to be covering this stuff later. But I encourage the amount of interaction that we can do uh, together here. So that's that's that one. And um, so we're going to cover a wide range of things. I'm guessing a lot of you attended the GP 101 session on Monday and saw Jessica uh, go through a huge amount of information uh, that were kind of more tips and tricks stuff. Well, I've got some of that too. Some of this might be a little more 101 than 201, but some of it is going to be uh, modules and, and, and so forth, things that um, uh, you own every single thing here, okay? So nothing that I'm going to do, it will cost you uh, any extra money to purchase something, okay? So the, whatever I show you, you're going to learn something today. My presentation today is going to be a combination of PowerPoints, but it is, I am going to be demoing GP and I'm using the latest version. If you're not on the latest version, it's no big deal. You probably will still be able to do it everything that I'm, I'm talking about here. So uh, I will, most of my examples I'll show in general ledger accounts payable. Why? Because that's what all of you guys have, at least that. Uh, for many of these things, uh, you can do in other modules as well. So with that, I'm going to start with, again, this is, a, this is, a, this is an oldie but goodie. Jessica, uh, Jessica did this. I just want to elaborate on this a little bit because keyboard shortcuts have long been a favorite topic of mine. Uh, yes, they will cut down your entry time by 82.7%. Uh, no, not joking, no, I'm just joking. But they will speed things up a lot. Every time you're entering data, for those of you just looking stuff up, no big deal. For those of you that are entering data, every time you take your hand off the keyboard, put them on a mouse to scroll, click look up something you lose time you will uh you will you will speed up your uh, ent data entry time by a lot if you manage a, if you learn a couple of key keyboard shortcuts 
when I used to do training, uh, uh, in-person training, uh, I would sometimes have a what's uh, a desert island exercise where I'd say, pretend you are on a desert island. And of course, you'd have your laptop because everybody carries their laptop everywhere. But say in going overboard, you lost your mouse. Where would you be? We did. We would do a, an exercise in just doing things with the keyboard. And in fact, I'm going to do one of the most common things, which is entering a uh, entering an, an invoice in accounts payable with the following keyboard shortcuts. You, you memorize these four and you'll be golden. The first is control L. Instead of clicking the magnifying glass, you're going to click and you're going to hold down the shift key, control L to look up whether it's vendors, accounts, whatever. Second, instead of clicking the save button or the process button or whatever, the OK button, enter will do that or maybe shift enter depending on your user preferences. Third, alt and the underlying letter is the same as clicking the button. And just so you know, and some of you do know this, I know, that is a window shortcut. So if you start looking, you're gonna see that in Word. You're gonna see that in Excel, that there are certain menu options and so forth that are underlined and keyboard shortcuts will apply for those software, or that software too. And lastly, Control W, just, just to close the window. So without further ado, I'm going to I'm going to demo the accounts payable uh, process here and for that I'm going to go into GP. Okay? And so I'm going to actually I I could probably start from right here. I could hit the alt key and it's going to be hard for you to see right now probably, but on the up at the top, transactions, inquiry, reports, cards, they all have an underlying letter. Transactions is A. So I hit A. I hit P for purchasing. I hit enter. I go and hit, if I, I could scroll down just to show you, this is classic method, but I could hit a T, underline T for transaction entry. My window comes up. For those of you working in payables, real familiar uh, screen here. So now keeping my hands on the keyboard, I'm just gonna go down and fill in what I need. So uh, I fill in, let's say I bought stuff. And by the way, in the latest version, I'm gonna put my glasses on here so I can see a little easier. Uh, in the latest version, there is a long description. Description has 30 characters. Long description has 200 characters. So you can enter in whatever you bought, okay, et cetera. All right, keep going. Batch ID, for sake of this, we could do the we could do this with a batch ID, but we're just going to do a single transaction and post that. Uh, the date. Uh, let's say this is as of the 30th of the month. Now Jessica mentioned this too. If you ever have to change a date, you don't have to, you don't have to use the calendar. You don't have to type in, I want to use the 30th. I it already knows that I'm in April. Well, this is sample data. The, so the sample month down here is 4 12 27 the year 2027 so that's what month it knows i'm in if i want to change the day of the month i just type in the day and it fills in the rest okay first keyboard shortcut uh vendor id i'm going to do control l instead of the magnifying glass i have my lookup let's say i want to choose uh, the vendor midwest I can just type in mid w midwest accounts okay there's my midwest accounts notice the select button is highlighted down there so all i have to do is hit enter and it chooses my vendor next field currency id tab tab through that oh by the way that's the other key i'm tabbing through everything you probably already know that but tabbing through the next field put in a invoice number tab 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 enter in a purchase pardon my dog in the background that's a, a, a feature and a hazard of working at home okay so we're done with this window here now we want to go to distributions if you look down down here at the bottom here you will see that the b is underlined for distributions alt b takes me to distributions and if i want to change that 
if I want to change that, uh, uh, if I want to change that uh, that account number, I could change it. I choose not to here. Notice the OK button is highlighted. I hit Enter again, and I'm I'm back to the screen. And lastly, I want to post this. Notice up here, the post button has an underline. Alt P post. It's going to print a couple of posting journals. When oh, when I close, got to close the window here. So Control W. First window, print it, close it. I'm going to close it. Second window, could Alt P print it. I'm going to Alt Control W close it. It's done. Now, that was pretty fast, and I was explaining what I was doing. I, I, I considered showing you how fast I could do by just whipping right through it, but I hope you have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that, but I hope you have the, uh, the idea that you can get this done in a really short amount of time, and you can just start whipping through. Again, you memorize those four shortcuts, you'll be golden. You'll do it, you'll memorize them in a couple hours, and you'll be flying, okay? All right, next, what do we got next on the, uh, next is use tax. Okay, what's a use tax? You know, this is where you're paying, you, you're keeping track of something, you're paying for something like an internet vendor who's not charging you sales tax, you know you owe this, you're gonna owe the state tax, or you're gonna owe tax to the state uh, for use tax, and you can use GP to get rid of the spreadsheet, calculate this automatically. So I'm gonna demo this first, and then I'm gonna show you how to set this up or what, what screens you're going to touch to set this up. So I'm going back to GP, and I am, for your purpose, I'm going to use the mouse a, a bit here. I'm going to go to purchasing. I'm gonna go back to transaction entry. And that screen you're familiar with here. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to go down, and I'm just going to tab through, and I'm going to just ignore the batch ID. I'm going to keep the same date. I think I'm going to go to vendor ID, and I'm going to go to Control L, and I'm going to use the vendor West. Uh, I'll type in West, and I'll go here West Junction Services. Okay, I'm going to, and I'll select him. So far, exactly the same as you'd enter in any invoice. Put in your date. Notice the shipping method of use tax, tax schedule of use tax. Uh, you can use this for the for a vendor. You'd want to set up and, and pre-assign the shipping method. It's going to help your. It's going to help uh, the data entry person. Okay, so I go through that, and I go put my amount in. Say a nice even thousand dollars. You'll see why in a second. So. When you put this in, that's the amount of your invoice that you owe West Junction. But when you tab through here, there's your 6% or $60 that you owe to somebody else, okay? But it doesn't end there. This is using GP's credit card feature. And you would say, okay, the $60 I'm going to put in there, and it opens up the credit card payable for those of you who, uh, who use this, uh, the regular credit card feature, you know about this, but instead of choosing a credit card, you set up use tax as a credit card. And then click okay. If we go to distributions here, we're gonna see that, okay, we've got $1,000 going to whatever expense account, and we have, and we have this 2,100 going to, going to payables, and then we have the $60 right here going to use tax expense to be offset by, and you can set up, but you don't have to, but you can set up a special use tax payable liability to keep track of just what you owe in use tax. And that automatically gets posted there. Okay, so now we just click post. Print, print journals, which I won't. And so here, here's, what's, here's what's happened here. You have created two invoices, one for $1,000 and one for $60. If we go to the West, uh, the West Junction, we will see 
there's our open for a thousand dollar or a thought the total is a thousand sixty but the unapplied amount is only a thousand dollars that's what you owe west junction service and the state of michigan how do we know it's the state of michigan and i'm going to show you you so when you set up the credit card you set up the the credit card person as the state of michigan and so you owe the state of michigan sixty dollars so at the end of the month when you get the bill from the state of michigan you're going to have all these invoices already in there or maybe you don't get a bill i should say but you're going to actually have that all ready cut a check for it send it in done much less much less uh, much easier to do than probably you've been used to doing it right now so what's involved with the setup here first you have to set up the use tax as a tax as a tax in the tax details and tax schedule i'm going to kind of assume you know how to how to set up taxes already so i'm not going to go through every single setup i'm just going to show you that what you in the company when you go to when you go to the tax details schedule here you set up use tax and you there's your six percent and there's your and there's your expense account there okay your user tax expense then you're going to set up you're going to assign that to the tax schedule the tax schedule is a is a way of taking multiple taxes like city and state uh, and, and local taxes and putting them as part of one comprehensive schedule so we're going to just we we would just set up a use tax schedule that just had the use tax detail next set up use tax as a credit card that's also in the administration area under company under credit cards so use tax okay and you say okay the vendor that gets paid the use tax you you create a you say use by company and that's where you put in your state of Michigan or whoever you're owing the use tax to. And of course, that could be multiple states. Last, last basic, well, there's two last things. You set up use tax as a shipping method, okay? That also is under company and it's under shipping methods. And you don't have to put anything in other than a description. The shipping type needs to be pickup. And then really the last thing you want to do is say, you don't have to do this, but it'll certainly help if you assign the use tax schedule you created and the shipping method for use tax to the vendor. So for that would, uh, whatever I, I did there, I'm going to go to purchasing and I'm going to go to vendor. And I'm going to say, I guess it's West Junction. And over here, you would you would put in, so it's a default, the schedule use tax and the shipping method use tax. And you do that, and you're ready to go using the use tax method. Okay, next, multi-currency. I'm going to take a quick break to let my canine out, which he never says boo but he is right now oops i uh <laughs> i have somebody that just did the job for me there so thank goodness to my wife sherry that and many other things so at any rate multi-currency what's multi-currency first of all everybody owns it okay it is it's a module that comes with your uh with your gp and of course if you're just using if you're just using uh us dollars you don't need to pay attention to this but your business is growing. You're a lot of you are in Michigan. Maybe you've got some Canadian uh, uh, Canadian vendors or Canadian customers that are going to build, that are going to send you an invoice in Canadian dollars or euros or rand or yen or whatever. Any anything in the world, you can set this up. You got to register the module for use. I'll show you where that is. 
this is going to use exchange rate tables. So it's going to you 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 set up this exchange rate table to do the the calculations or the the rates between dollars and whatever your foreign, which is called originating currency, is. And you can change that. You can insert more on a on a monthly, daily basis. Uh, you can actually use import tools to automatically populate that. This will actually, not only will this calculate your individual uh, transactions into US dollars, but if you've got timing changes, like say, and we'll show you this as an example, the invoice comes in and the rate is one thing, by the time you pay it, the rate fluctuates and it goes up or down. This will automatically uh, calculate the gain or loss due to currency fluctuations and post that, it's a beautiful thing. All right. Now, I'll just go back here. Let's put that into play. Okay. Uh, let's take my screen here. All right. So I'm going to show you a quick, I'm going to show you the exchange rate table. Okay. Now, you can have, you can create your own. Uh, the, it comes with uh, a lot of exchange, a lot of currencies already. So the exchange rate table, for example, if we look at Canadian, uh, those of you who deal in uh, with foreign currencies know you could have a different rate if you're buying the currency, a different rate if you're selling, and or you could just merge them together. And it's the same table either way. And this is what we're going to do. We're just going to say we're going to take an average whether or not you you are having payables uh, currency or uh, receivables currency. But you can have two different rates for either one. Okay, so we would go in here and you would take the currency or you would take, you know, you look up in the Wall Street Journal or whatever, what's the rate you want to use today? You merely put the rate in and you would insert it. You can see here, remember we're in that month of April of 2027. As of April 12th, it was 74 cents to the dollar. On April 30th, it dropped to 73%, 73 cents to the dollar. And so that's so that fluctuation will determine gains or losses. Okay, so let's let's put in a bill. Same thing, transaction entry. We're gonna just tab right through all this stuff. And we're gonna say, what date do I want? Yeah, I'm gonna take that date. I'm gonna take the this uh, Bergeron vendor, Bergeron Communications, and notice what happens here. This this vendor has already set been set up with Canadian currency. So the rest of it is just the same way you would you would normally do. Invoice number, amount. So they're, remember, they're billing us in Canadian, and you can tell there's a there's a C in front of everything. If I go to distributions here, notice it's doing the math. It's saying, okay, the originating amount is $1,000, but using the exchange rate table for today, that translates into $740 of US dollars. So you're gonna be able to look up and report on either the US dollars or the Canadian dollars. Okay, post that. And there is my $740, because that's what's in my books here. Okay. Now, say it comes time, it's time to pay, pay this. Now, with this, you need a checkbook that's in Canadian dollars. Okay, so you're because you're paying, you're paying in Canadian dollars, and you just so happen to have one. It's the Royal Canadian uh, Bank here. And so we do the check just the same as we would always do. Okay, computer checks. I'm going to say this is as of the 30th. Instead of the default checkbook, Uptown Trust, I pick Royal Canadian. Okay, go to transactions. And I pick Boma or I Bergeron Communications. And there it is. We're paying them in Canadian dollars at a thousand dollars. But when we actually, you know, and 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 if if you've got that Canadian checkbook, you've got it. You know, you're reading out for a thousand dollars, but you want to 
uh, you want to say this is really only worth so much. And if we print the check, there's a check for $1,000 in Canadian. You will see in front of it. Now, watch when we, watch when we post the payment. Got a check for a thousand, nothing, nothing different there. But so it has that we're only taking 730 out of our account. Why 730? Because the rate dropped. And it says, well, the ten dollars, because we have to reduce the payables by the whole 740. The rate, the the, the payable went to a account we created called Realize Gain on multi-currency transactions, automatic posting. So I will say this, multi-currency is very pervasive. So don't enter into it lightly because, oh, once you do that, once you start setting it up, there's a, there's a few other setups and, and you actually, the first step is to go here under it, under registration, and say that you want to use, these are all the modules you have, by the way. Some of you may not know this. You own those modules. And for me, I've got them probably all checked. For you, you probably don't have them all checked and you just come down here and click multi-currency management. But there's some other setup steps too, and it is a pervasive thing uh, throughout your system. So you probably should talk to, a qualified GP consultant to kind of help you with the initial setup of this. All right, next. And you can kind of see, what's the order of importance? There is no order. It's it's just there's some stuff that is more involved, some stuff is, is easier, and some stuff you have to set up. Others, like this find, you can, uh, and some of you probably already do this. So, um, those of you, everybody does GP reports. I know you're doing posting journals, you're doing detailed trial balances, you're doing aging schedules and so forth. But sometimes it's like you print that detailed schedule. It's 242 pages and you're scrolling down and you're trying to find what you what you need. Um, and uh, you, you're trying to find out what you need and you get, you're scrolling down find is a beautiful thing to help you out the key is print the report to the screen and then use control f to find any text string even if it's a number so you can look up a check number you can look up maynard kasterison and you know you're looking for who you you know paying them etc and then the first time you find it use control f and it'll ask you well i'll show you this to type in the text string Every time after, you just do Control G to go all the way through your report and find other occurrences of that string. Uh, remember to start at the top of the report. Okay, I think that's it. Yes, okay. All right, so let's do this. Let's run. Shall we run the? Let's run the detail trial balance. I'm in financial. I'm going to reports. I'm going to trial balance, detailed, okay? Pick my option. Remember, in the sample company, this kind of is the sample company. Um, you know what? I'm gonna change this to uh, not 2025, but 2027. I'm gonna change to April 040127 to 030430. Notice I'm just putting the day of the month. Insert that destination it is going to the screen and I print this okay and we have a nice compact 27 page report here okay so I'd uh, say you're looking for a check number say you're looking for check 2061 so you click either click find or you click Control F and you type in 20061. Click OK or hit Enter with your keyboard shortcut and it takes you right to the first thing it sees. So it has 20061. Chances are that's your only time you're going to see that text string in there. How will we know? Control G. Let's see what other instance of that there are. So I just hit Control G 
And there's two, because one's probably from the accounts payable, the other's from cash. And let's go again. And whoops, and there's nothing there. Okay, now let's look for a particular vendor. Let's look for inner city electric. Do I need to type inner city electric the whole thing? Absolutely not. Waste of waste of time. I just type inner. Now keep in mind it's a text string. Don't type inner all in uppercase. Won't find that. Don't type inner with just the with just the I in it. Won't won't find that. So if I do this, okay. There's my first event. Control G, second, third, fourth. You can just go scroll right through your whole report and look for all the instances there. Very handy, available, nothing to set up. All right. Next, remove autocompletes. What's an autocomplete? Well, some of you, most of you probably know this, but those of you who don't, it, it, you'll all know this probably because as you're typing in stuff, it'll make suggestions to try to pick for you. And like QuickBooks has this autofill. Well, GP, life works differently because in GP, it accumulates different autocompletes for different people for different GP users. So everyone, so an AP person is going to have a certain ones and G, uh, some sort of uh, salesperson going to have different ones, etc. Okay. So why do we even need to remove autocompletes? Because chances are you've typed in something and hit enter. And so, you know, you typed in M for Mainer, but instead of choosing Mainer, you hit enter. And so there's a, there's an M just always hanging out there. Annoying, right? This is, I'll show you how to get rid of this, okay? So you can either remove one entry or say you just want to start over. You can remove all the autocompletes for yourself and start fresh. Here's how, okay? First of all, so say, and I saw this when I was doing this, um, I'm going to just, uh, shit, I'll save that. Uh, I'm back in GP land and I'm going to that vendor thing, okay? So I'm going to go to purchasing. I'm going to go to cards and I do W and there is a W made that mistake. I don't want that W or I don't want any, any of those for what, for whatever it is. You highlight the one, you right click on it and you do remove from list. Okay. Uh, you know what? I did that again because I hit enter. So right click, remove from list, pick the one you want, you know, enter. Do it again, W, gone. You wanna get rid of all of them? Here's where. Click on the home page. It's up here on user preferences. Now, Jessica went over some of this too. So, but what she didn't go over, there's no, I mean, I wouldn't go over it in GPU in the first one either, because there's so much to, there's so many little nuggets here, okay? Autocomplete, you click autocomplete, and all you have to do is say, remove entries. That starts over. Say, for whatever reason, you don't even want any autocompletes. Just unmark the show autocompletes and click remove entries. Then you won't be bothered by them again, if that's a bother. Why would anybody do that? I have seen occasion where the autocompletes actually slow down uh, performance for a user. So we have, we have on occasion, uh, made that recommendation for people. You can also remove unused entries as a certain amount of days. If you, you know, after a year, 365 days, if it's not there, it goes away automatically. Next. So there, the one entry, right click entry, removes from list. And there's the how to get to it. I know you all took really great notes, so that you should certainly don't need this. But if you do, as, as Justin said, it's on it's on our website, so you can uh, you can grab it stuff. All right, next, add your own website or add any website for that matter to the home page. 
So there's a section, I'm guessing most of you, maybe some of you use this, is called Connect. And, and, and really what it does out of the box, if you have the Connect uh, portion of the home page, it just feeds Microsoft related stuff. And it changes pretty much every day. It's kind of cool, but it's not necessary to your, um, to your uh, operation, your GP operation. So maybe you'd like your own website, or maybe you just like a website that you use all the time. It doesn't have to be your own website. You can do that. Now, the key here is to find this file, the dex.ini file. And this is the, where it's found. And I'm going to, and you're going to add these two lines. So you're gonna, now this I expect you to get from your, from, from these things here. You're gonna just type in these two lines at the very end and save it. And you know, if, if that fills you with, with fear, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm altering something that I, I, don't know, I don't know how to do this. Well, one, I assure you, it's very easy. Two, get an IT person to help you. They'll have no, they'll have no qualms about, about doing this. These are the two lines. To find them, we're going to, let's see, I'm gonna actually go here. And it's under the C drive, Program Files x86, Microsoft Dynamics, that's written in the, this is written in the, the, the handout here, GP 2018, and this is in the data folder. So this folder, this or this file, dex.ini, just lists some parameters that govern how GP is to work. So you can, and this is a good point, just make a copy of this. When in doubt, make a copy. Right click on dex.ini, copy. Right click on blank space, paste, and it will make a copy of the file. So if you just totally goof it up, you still got a backup that you can rename that Dex INI, no, no harm done. So you would go in, I'll just edit this because I've done this already. And when I when you do it, it kind of puts it up in the middle somewhere. I'm gonna do Control F, look for connect. And I uh, was hoping it would just outline it really nice for me, but uh, it didn't. Oh, there it is, debug connect. So I looked right, I typed that in and then I said, this is my website that I want to go to. It could be anything. It could be ESPN.com. Of course, that doesn't have much information these days, but hopefully another few months, it will. At any rate, uh, so then what you do is you go to the home page, and you, if you don't have Connect, you click Customize This File, and you add Connect. Click OK. And voila, there is our website. And Frank, you could actually add Maynard Kasterson's website. And then you could go to, you know, you could go Maynard CPA and you can do the support thing, or you maybe have a client portal with us. Beautiful stuff. Okay. I'm going to just stop momentarily, not because I need to let my dog out or anything, but just wondering. Does anybody have any questions here? I don't know if, I'm presuming nothing's come in because Justin would have would have done this. Uh, so uh, I am going to uh, just pause for a second, find out if anybody's got any questions about what I've spoken about so far, and then I can address those. I'm going to kind of migrate back to my website a little bit my PowerPoints. Okay. Uh, it is possible, maybe, because I'm getting messages that the organizer is experiencing technical difficulties. So perhaps some of you have been have been writing stuff uh, in the chat, but uh, Justin has Matt, not been able to get them. Justin, I can hear you. Sorry, Justin. we've uh, we've had Several big thunderstorms rolling through my area here. Uh, um, I actually lost power, but it's said the webinar has stayed up off of my phone battery and hotspot. Um, I haven't seen any attendees send any chats or questions of okay. any issues. So I think okay. your presentation has been going fine still. The only question okay. that I had was uh, uh, an 
attendee did lose. Justin, you kind of clipped out on me there. I can't hear anything you're saying right at the moment. Apparently, we are experiencing more technical difficulties. I'm just going to forge ahead then and uh, and 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 continue here. All right. So um, this is something that we do whenever we set up a test company for you. But say you just want something to you want to be warned, you know, when you get in uh, that this is for test purposes only or this is for historical purposes only. Don't enter live data. You can set up a warning really, really, really easily here. And I'm going to, and, and, and so you want users to be warned that a particular company is not for production use. And this is where we do it. And so I'm going to, I'm just going to show you right here where to do this. I'm going to go back into GP. Oh, had that big old website there. Kind of fooling me. Okay. So I go, I go into administration. And when you name your company, by the way, if your company changes names, you go here and just change the name. You go under company and company, and you just change the company name right there. The system knows the company name and ID in the SQL database right here. But you, all you would do if you want to make this a test company is put in the following, is put in the, the less than sign or the greater than uh, Less than sign, and I would suggest put in 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 bold test, and then the greater than sign. Just doing that and saying okay, will pot will will make when you log in, it will make that it'll make a a, uh, a message pop up to say this is for test purposes only. The other word that will work is historical. Either of those will pop up a message. Easy peasy. I'm actually not going to do this because I don't necessarily want to do that for the for the uh, sample company here. Only those two. Only those two uh, words work. Okay. Removing removing headers in GP report for easier viewing in Excel. It is probably perhaps the most annoying thing to GP users that they can't get a GP report in native Excel format. All things equal, GP reports are probably the best way of getting, of seeing data in GP because one, they've already been created. They've got totals, they've got subtotals, they've got headers, they're easy to read. And, uh, and they're right. You know, when you, if those of you who have designed custom reports know that you know, sometimes you can do a lot, but you, you didn't create the report correctly. And that is a, that's worse than having no report at all. It doesn't subtotal correctly, doesn't include all the information, it includes too much information. So, uh, so this is something that automatically starts with the right stuff, but you know that they're a bear to read in Excel. Notice the number of asterisks I put in there, okay? And so the, the uh, a solution is take away the headers and report layout using the report writer tool. So um, now this comes with a little bit of a caveat. If you haven't used report writer, you probably should get a little tutorial and some basic report writer how to do this or else other worse things can happen. So I'm going to do, what shall I do? Okay, I'm gonna do the summary trial balance. I'm going to go to financial and I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, reports, trial balance, and summary. Okay, I'm picking my demo. I click modify. Now, I'm going to go to the screen and, you know, and you, this is probably what you've done, or if you go to print and, yeah, that looks, that looks great. Okay. The same report, when you put it to Excel, has all those all those headers every 60 lines, and and sometimes the detailed trial balance. That is a real mess. Or some some reports can be really, really, really messy. You just gotta modify the heck out of them to get them in a readable Excel format. And this is this has been this has been annoying. Um, 
So here's the thing, you know, a quick, quick uh, jaunt into Report Writer. So you click, you put it to the screen and you click Modify. This takes you into Report Writer and it takes you into the layout here. And so if you, again, you if the, the first time that people get in here, they go, holy moly, this is something I don't want to even get into. This is scary. So, uh, but just to note, you are not modifying the original report. You are modifying a modified report. So if, it, if, if this uh, intimidates you, you can try it. And if it doesn't work, you just go back to the original report. So really what you want to do basically is you want to just take out, you want to just take out and you can highlight uh, the, the shift key and you can lasso things and you just take out all this pretty header stuff. Okay, if I do that, um, I'm actually going to take out everything, but the, the, the line I might want, which is the, the real column stuff right here. And take that out and maybe take out this stuff too. And I'm just doing this so I can see everything I might need to take out. There's a, there's a separate, the, the, this section is the page header. Um, this actually has what appears on every page but the report header. And if we really wanted to do this right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, I'm just going to use the, re I'm going to take out this whole page header. So I just want the top of the report. So I would go to tools. I would go to section options. And I would say, you know what, on this report, I don't, I don't need nor want a page header, just a report header. Watch what happens when I click OK. It's gone. Oops, I got other stuff here. I want to get rid of that too. So all I want is that first, is that last line down here. I'll try to lasso this, see if I can get the rest of this. And just lasso this. And there we go. Okay, close this, save this, click OK. Come back into GP, because I kind of shelled out of GP a little bit. So now I've got to come back into Microsoft Dynamics GP. Again, this is presupposing that you have a little bit of knowledge of report writers. So I'm going, normally we do something like this. If we're training, we take about an hour to go through all this stuff, okay? And we're happy to, to train you if, if that's something you want uh, want to, to use. Report Writer, by the way, is a great tool for modifying any other, any other GP report to add fields that you might want on a report or get rid of all that other garbage that sometimes those reports are really busy. That's a, just, just a great tool for doing this. All right, so now I'm going to come here under Alternate Modified Forms and Reports. Anytime I have a modified report, and I just made one right here, the first time I have to tell the system to use that report, to use that modified report. I'm going to reports here. I have to tell it to use the modified report, not the original. This is under financial. It was under trial balance summary. And that is a little bit interesting because I'm expecting to see the uh, modified report. Uh, I guess it was a history report. That's what I modified. So I got the regular guy. I want the modified guy right here, okay? To say, use the modified report. Now, we're gonna run that report again. We're running it for a prior year and um, that's fine. Um, but now we're gonna say destination because if we run to the screen, it's just gonna show data. That's not gonna look very good. But we're gonna say instead of the screen, we're gonna run it to, well, we're gonna run to a screen, but we're gonna also run to a file. 
and we're going to name we're going to browse and put that we'll just put this on my desktop i'll call this summary summary trial balance or tb just to keep it simple i probably want to put my report my month that i was doing this for here's the key instead of a text file we're going to go notice there's no excel why they didn't put an Excel option in. I, after all these years, I'm still amazed. The closest thing you're going to get is Comma Delimited. Okay, save that. I, I click OK. I print that, and it's going to go both to the screen. I like the screen because it'll tell me I'm done, that it's created the file as well. It's also going to go to the okay. spreadsheet. And here's summary trial balance. And basically, it's got all that stuff there, but it's it, it only has it, should only have it, because I think I'm using that, yeah. No, well, it has at the end. I would have gotten rid of everything, but instead of having a break every 60 lines kind of thing, this is much cleaner by taking out. Hopefully, you'll see it's much cleaner than taking that by taking out all the stuff that you don't need in an Excel report. Do it here, not in Excel. Okay. Next. Okay, that's not my dog. I can tell you that. So. All right, this is kind of a, this has been here for many versions. It's really simple. It's the, if you need to know where a vendor is or where a customer is, maybe you want to deliver product to them or where an employee is, maybe you want to, you know, give them, Maybe you want to give them, oh, I shouldn't even say this. Maybe you want to give them their pink slip and pick up their computer because you've let them go and you need to know how to get there. So you can do this for either vendor or customer or employee. It's found in cards and you click this little pin next to the address ID. So we shall go into GP. We'll close this out. We'll go, let's see, go back to the main thing. Let's go to employee. Gonna go to HR and payroll. We're gonna go to cards and under employee. We'll bring up an employee. For those of you who dealt with us as consultants, uh, you know that we always, when we demo things, we always pick the first person, whether it's a customer, a vendor, employee. We used to have a running joke as to, who is Pilar Ackman? Is it even a man or a woman? It's always been kind of a, uh, we've always kind of said amongst ourselves. Well, uh, we could ask the question, where does Pilar Ackerman live? Well, she lives, or he lives, on 987 Willow Avenue in Winnetka, Illinois. So where is that? You click on this little, there, here's right next to the, right next to the internet addresses, the, the globe icon we have this little on you know it looks like an envelope click that and this opens up microsoft bing and it opens up a bing map and it tells you where it is and in fact it's got a google map so you know well it's got a bing map and you can actually see you know you can do the whole 360 degrees and see okay well she lives on a you know she lives on a nice nice uh, suburban looks like semi-suburban neighborhood etc okay or she, or he perhaps probably picked the wrong wrong uh, wrong employee to do but anyway it's kind of a nice little feature it's been around for quite a while and it's uh, something that it's already in you don't have to set up anything to do Navigation panes. Might this be a better place to print GP reports? And this wasn't always in existence, and probably us old time consultants, uh, we're still inclined uh, oftentimes to just show you the within GP place to do it. But you mo any report that you can do within GP proper, you can also do from a navigation pane. So this, you might not have been taught this, but there is a place for it. Um, one reason why it's better is that in some reports, you don't know what section of a module it's in. 
and I'll, I'm going to show you this. For example, the inventory stock status report. So <clears throat> when I when I would tell people where to run that, I would go into, I would go of course into inventory, and I go into reports, and I go, hmm, is it under activity? I don't know. I have to look up, and I go this, and I'd say. Uh, yeah, it's, it is under activity, but maybe I would have picked analysis. Sometimes it's under analysis. Sometimes it's under history. It could be, you know, there's this interim place. If I just click over here on the navigation pane, Microsoft Dynamics GP reports, it takes a second to load up all the reports. And by the way, this is also where you do, you used to do Excel reports which I think there might be a part of a, uh, a webinar this week on Excel reports. And this lists all the inventory reports in alphabetical order. And there's my stock status report right there. Now I could either do a new option and that, and that would you know, force me to uh, use, uh, you know, create, create my own option, or I could do the, an option that's already there. I mark it and what I'd say is don't print it. This is like I always just say, don't insert and print a report. Always look at it, click modify to look at it, click here, edit report option, because that will give you the proper screen. And then you can choose, okay, for which items do I want, which dates do I want, et cetera, where's my, my destination, it's going to the screen. From here I do it. It's a faster way of finding this stuff. There are also some things you can do with these uh, reports and filter it. You can do several reports. I can do this and this and so forth and, and run things uh, that are not in consecutive uh, order. So navigation reports has, the navigation lists, I should say, nav list we call them, have their place. And this is time to remember to click the edit report option. Next, we just modified a report. You can also modify a screen. Any GP screen can be modified through a product called Modifier. And this modifier used to cost $5,000 back in the day. Now it's free to all of you. You all own this. And some of this is really kind of programming and uses something called VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. And that's not what well, that's not for you. It's not for you, it's for programmers, okay? But you don't need it to do simple screen modifications. Even I can do them. So if I can do them, you can do them. And I'm gonna show you kind of how to do this, all right? We are going to modify that window we've been using quite a bit of, the transaction, AP transaction entry window. And it's always in my contention that people should use this uh, to get rid of all of the extraneous stuff they never have to use. Like, let's, let's say this. So, you know, this is the non-modified window. And I'm gonna bet you nobody, 0%, maybe 0.1% uses all these windows. Trade discount, we never tell you to do that. We just say, enter the purchases and tab, 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 maybe tab through all this. You might not need any of this stuff down here. So it'll make for a cleaner window. It'll make for a, it'll make for a, uh, a faster window to enter data, especially with that, um, especially with those keyboard shortcuts. So, Here's what you can do. I'm gonna see if, oh, and here, let me see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh yeah, caveats, I'll get to that in a second. Um, back to, uh, drum balance. No, I'll just pick this again, transaction entry. Okay, you can actually go to tools and then customize and you can modify current window. Control F10 is the shortcut. This is beautiful because you don't have to figure out where the window is. Okay, it wants to save changes to my other report. Sure. Again, it's kind of half getting me out of GP, and it's going into this into this modifier window. 
So there's your window, okay? And we want to get rid of some stuff, okay? We want to get rid of trade discount. And so we just highlight it and remove it. Freight, highlight, remove it. Miscellaneous, highlight, remove it. Don't want to get rid of tax because I use that for the use tax, okay? Um, but anything you're not going to use, you can get rid of. That just gets rid of, of headers, of, of, you know, of labels, okay? That's easy. Uh, text, and this is actually where data comes from, is a little more involved. It's, it's, a, it's a box. So I know that box I wanted to get rid of. I just come over here and highlight this, and I see a little properties window. And if I so that tells how this when it was first set up what the attributes of this are, and I go to visual, and I change visible from true to false. It goes heck, what the heck? It's still there. No, because now I've got an underlying uh, uh, data field or box. And if I double click that, I see the originating trade discount amount. I merely change that to false, and now it's gone. Sometimes there's just one, sometimes there's two. So if I go here and I do this, true, change it to false, do it again, change true to false, and uh, I do this, change true to false, and do this and change true to false. Okay, let's just take those three out. We close this, we save the changes, we click OK, and we come back into GP, because we're kind of half out of GP. So we come back into Microsoft Dynamics GP. Now, remember I said, like reports, you can do whatever you want, and if you gum this up, it, it's still got the original window. And in fact, right now, it's using the original window. So we have to tell it, hey, don't use the original, use the modified window. We're gonna go into administration. We did this a few minutes ago. We're gonna go into modified alternate forms and reports. We were talking a few minutes ago about minutes ago about reports. Now we're gonna talk about forms. We bring up our one ID default user. We go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, because that's where 99% of them are, and we go to Windows, and we wait a minute, and it's gonna show us all the potentially modified window, windows that have been modified. Uh, we know this is under purchasing, and there's payables transaction entry, and we were using the non-modified, now we're gonna use the modified. Got a problem with the modified? Go back and mark it the other way. Save that, go to purchasing, go to transaction entry, voila, all gone. I maintain you could, you know, most, some of you guys could undo this, could hide this whole thing here and maybe hide PO number and maybe hide shipping method and maybe hide currency ID. You know, really in, in, in this screen, there's only a couple things, a couple places to enter information. One. This stuff pops in automatically. Maybe the payment terms, two. The document number, three. Uh, and then the purchase is four. Everything else might not, if you didn't ever use those, hide them. Modify the window. Oh, the other thing, the other yeah. really simple thing you can do. Yeah, Justin? Uh, sorry, just one question here. Um, are these window edits user-specific only? Are these, are these user-specific? No, they are not. They will modify it for everybody in every company. That's the default. Now, if it is your desire just to modify them for certain users, in that modified window screen, you could create, you could create in, over here, in the modified forms, you could create an ID just for certain users who you would like to have that if it's not for everybody. And then you just assign those users to, uh, to to that to that ID. Where do you do that? Under user security, you say, okay, well, say I've got the uh, say I've got the AP user that I only want to see this, and the AP user uses default user you as as their modified alternate modified forms and reports ID. 
you would create a new one for AP and you'd say, well, the AP user here is going to use the AP ID. So the default is everybody, can be adjusted though. Okay. Um, some caveats using modifier. Everybody needs to be out of GP to use this, which might seem apparent because you're getting into stuff that maybe somebody's in accounts payable and doing this. So the the uh, long and the short of this is everybody's got to be out for the time that you're doing this. As you've seen, uh, it doesn't take long to do some of these things. So they don't have to be out for long, but they have to be out. For that reason, when we uh, when we do something, and we do, of course, anything that you need help with, we could we could help you with. We usually, when we're doing this, we do it at the end of the day or even in the evening, so that we're not impeding anybody's natural work. Um, and and this is what we just did. You need to tell the system that you're using the modified window, not the original window. <laughs> Which is great because no matter how badly you mall the window, you still got the original one to fall back on. Now, one last thing um, is you know if you're using a modified window because there is, this is hard to see here, but there's a little period in front of payables transaction entry. And so some of you guys will go back and go, oh, I'm, I think this is modified. You can go back in your system if you see a little period. It's modified. If you think you had a window, a modified window, and don't anymore, uh, go back and check, and maybe somehow uh, it accidentally got uh, marked to use the non-modified window. And then it's just a matter of going into that alternate modified uh, ID and say, oh yeah, let's use the let's use the modified guy again. Okay. Field level security. So I'm gonna guess maybe one percent of you use field level security because you don't need it. Maybe, probably. Standard GP security goes right down to the window level. So if you, what means is if you can see the window, you can see every part of the window, and uh, that's usually good. But maybe there's a part of a window that you don't you want hidden or disabled for certain people, um, like uh, this field level security is when you can when you limit on the field basis, not just the window basis. You're going down one more level to do this. The most common uh, area I think that, that we get asked for is the what somebody makes. So sometimes, you know, in the pay code maintenance window, you don't want somebody, you want somebody to enter in the employee and you want them to look at the employee, but you don't want them to see how much they make, especially if it's the boss. You don't want to know that they're, ma you know, that they're, they're making a million dollars a year, et cetera. So, um, so you would uh, perhaps want to enable field level security. Here's, here's how you do this. First of all, you go into, uh, let's see, do we go into administration and go into company? Uh, no, that's account security where we do a company. By the way, not going into this, but you can actually limit uh, the accounts that people can see. That one you have to turn on here. Field level, you merely go, and this is all in the system setup. So you go into the system setup, and go to field level security, okay? And this is kind of an old fashioned looking uh, kind of explorer type icon, but it's kind of cool because you would be able to create the, uh, you would be able to create the, uh, the, the, the files or the windows that you want, and you could limit them to the people you want, and you could limit them to the companies you want, okay? so. Let's say, so we got pay rates here, and I'm just going to pick pay rates, and there's pay rates. And so what you do, and, and 
right here, there are several things you can do with any given field. And, and by the way, you create it, you go to a new one, you create it, and you have to actually look up the look up the form name, the technical form name. And then from that, you look up, you pick the, the pay rate amount or whatever field you want. Here's what you can do with them. You can hide them. You can disable them. You can lock them. You can have a password required before they open it or after they save it. So there are several things that you can do with this. And once you do that, then you say, well, I'm going to say uh, hide the field. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to then say, OK, I'm going to mark this to be used. So right now it's going to be used for SA in the Fabricam company. I could go and assign it to various people in the, in the company. This, this will suffice right here. And so that being the case, and then I'll apply this. So in the, under payroll, under cards, under pay code maintenance, I bring up an employee. And right there with where the pay code, oh, and I bring up a pay code, let's say, right there is where the pay, where, where it was. So uh, she has holiday pay, can't see it. She has salary pay, can't see it. It's being hidden. And you can do that with any field anywhere in GP. Okay, so that's the way you hide it, say it'll require a password to change it. And there's there's where you go to enable it or to work with it. National accounts. We're going into the realm of sales now, okay? So what is national accounts? I think it was actually a third party uh, software that like a lot of things got incorporated that Microsoft bought them out. Uh, and so that's kind of the name is a little nebulous. So what the heck is this? Okay, say you got many customers, but the primary use of this, you got many customers, but one headquarters pays the invoice. You may invoice like car, like the big three, I understand like the, the automakers. You know, you may be billing to different plants or different uh, different entities, but Ford headquarters is going to pay the bills. So if you don't have this enabled, you got to break out that payment and figure out which customers this applies to. And you have to break that payment out into little bitty increments that don't necessarily tie out to the to the bank rec module. OK, so. It, national accounts solves that question. Here's where it's, uh, do I have it? Okay, there's where it is. Under cards, national accounts, you assign parent-children relationships. So, uh, let's go to sales. Let's go to cards. Let's go to national accounts. So you've already set the customers up, okay? And I'm I'm going to go to. I've already set one of these up, I think. Okay, I'm going to go to. I thought this was set up, but maybe it's not. Uh, so I want to take computer 0003, computer leasing equipment. And I want that, that they're the parent company, I'm going to say, of, of Computex Solutions, CompuC001, and Computer001, Computerized Phone Systems. So I bring up the parent, the one I want to be the parent, right here. Okay. And then I pick the children I want underneath that. So I'm going to pick, and I'm going to do my little, my little uh, filtering here. I'm going to go down to computer, oh, 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 well, I'll do that one, computer, computer, Computech. And it also tells you, oh, what's the balance here? There's a balance of 983600, oh, 9836 uh, even. And then I'll I'll pick, I'll go to C-O-M, C-O-M-P, and I'll pick computer 001, and whoops, 
sorry, I'm going to enter computer. Oh, I want computer 003. So I'm going to go computer. And if I start typing, oh, look, there's an autocomplete. I'll pick them. And to that, I will pick computer COM, COMP, computer tech solutions, and computer 001. And of course, if you know it, you can just type the whole thing out there. Okay, so so they have 50, a balance of 1599989, and I'll save that. So now, when I go to cash receipts in transactions, and I say, okay, I'm going to go to the parent company here, computer 001, or is it 003? It's 003. And I say, okay, do I, I can go to a Nash of auto apply. Oh, let, let's put, let's put, oh, it says, hmm, Dell exchange rate cannot be found. Okay, whatever. I didn't realize they were, oh, you know what? Okay. Um, let's see. Can I get past this here? Cancel, cancel. No. Continue. All right, let's put a valid rate. Let's just put $1, one-to-one -one ratio. Let's keep going, add rate, add it to the table. Click OK. Uh, exchange rate, uh, save that. OK, tab off of that, add exchange rate. Yes, I do, thought I did. Oh, insert that, so sorry. OK. So it's in dollars or in Australian dollars. Okay, I think the point we'll still be able to do this. We'll say national account, and then we can click apply. And this is the key, okay? We can apply to the whole national account, or we can say specific customer, bring up the children. Uh, I'm not seeing any, oh, I know why. I gotta put in my total amount here. Uh, let's see, adding those two numbers, 25,000, 735.89. And I click apply and I go to specific customer and that should pop in, but it doesn't. And that one would have it too. My my little example is failing here, but you can kind of, I hope, see that you can actually see the, the people. It all, They also can apply by national account and it's an easier way to apply it to the children versus breaking up the total amount of the check. Okay, I actually got these uh, idea. I got um, after after I was kind of attending Jessica's uh, thing, and I thought, oh, I wonder if she's going to do this because these are a couple of my favorite things, and I have I have a, a couple of minutes here. So bonus slides. These are not if you if you downloaded the uh, if you downloaded my slides already, you don't have this. Uh, but I will try to get them on so you can download these as well. But they're, I just think, those of you who work with me know that SmartList is one of the coolest things about GP. And I think that, and I, when I work with people, I usually add this SmartList to their toolbar so they can get to it as easily as possible. And so here's how to do that. So I actually, I'm going to, I'm going this, this is the, the, uh, the individual steps. I'm just going to go through and do this to show you how it works. I'm going to go back to the original here and I'm going to go, cause this is a toolbar. It's only one click, but one click can make a big difference. Ask General Motors. They kind of took the periods out of their logo so that it wouldn't waste, uh, you know, wouldn't, people wouldn't have to type periods on it. Uh, I, I hear. So, you know, a little bit of Savings can make a big deal difference over time. I want to put this right on the toolbar. Here's how. You right click on the toolbar, and first of all, you unlock it so you can do this stuff. Secondly, you right click again, and you click customize. What menu do you want to customize? Well, this is the main menu. How do I know that? It's got a little asterisk. I click add. And you can add anything you want on this toolbar. And in any of these sections, uh, fortunately for this, SmartList is right here on the main section. Click SmartList, it's there. 
But wait, we're not done. We want to modify this selection and say, well, this is actually is what I want. Normally, it'll come up with the false style, which is just a little icon. And the rest of this is in text. So we want this to be text only as well. And we click OK. And voila, there it is. The last thing we want to do is we want to right click and we want to relock the toolbar. So now, and this is any company for this user, every user's got to do it themselves. For this user, you are one click away and it's always there. Here's my second bonus slide. Okay, so this, this is a list of exactly what I just did. My second bonus slide is customizing the smart list appearance. So um, the first thing is this. The default guy right here, the left side, is generally cut off. So if you go and you open up stuff, like in payroll, and you open up uh, you know, employee history or uh, the transactions, okay, sometimes this gets cut off. And the intuitive thing would be to just to do this and drag it out, this little, this little bar. But no, that would be too easy. You got to hover over this, and then you right-click to change the width. You can either increase the width or decrease the width. So I usually tell people to increase the width a little bit, and that way you can see every favorite that you've ever set up without being cut off. The second is this. The, the out-of-the-box thing, when you run a favorite, it actually hides this left part here. And then you got to click this little arrow to get it back. It's annoying. It's only one click, but it's annoying. How do you get rid of that arrow, which I've already done? You go to Smart List, and you go to Favorites pane at the bottom. The default for everybody is to enable Auto Hide. Well, just unmark that. And then you have, this will always be showing, which is the better look, okay? So you come back over here, and uh, it's always gonna be showing even after you run a favor. And with that, we're done. So, as you've seen, some of this is really, really simple. Some's a little more complicated. And of course, if you need assistance, you can call any of our, you can put in a help request or you can get in touch with your favorite consultant and you can have, and you can have them uh, or me uh, work with you on any of this stuff. And my contact information is right here. With that, thanks for attending today. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you, everybody.